scams like tourist scams while traveling happen every day revealed in china of a man or a woman approaching you pointing to a stain on your clothes and then trying to sell a product have you come across any scam like this in all of your travels you know the reason that scams work is because people are so convincing maybe 2 years back i was in budapest and the number one reason for scams is taxis you are at the shop you give the card now the cashier will act they are busy right. on their phone so they take the card card in one hand phone in the other phone is above the card and they are acting as if they are either talking to someone or they are acting as if they are messaging someone but when you are waiting for them they will quickly click a photo of your card but huh. then your photos with them and they'll probably use that to buy anything they want and then suddenly you'll see a credit card charge on your card for 50000 rupees and you would not know that Sunil I was recently in China and you know um one of the things that becomes a hassle in China is that most of the people don't speak English right so we were walking around Beijing one of the times and me Raj and my other fellow cousins we were roaming around this electronics market and suddenly I looked down and on the side of my pants there is a huge black stain right okay. and whenever there is a black stain or any stain on your mm. pant or clothes you tend to feel uncomfortable and that's how i felt but i was like okay oh well like you know might as well not like go go around Why, the market you know? yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and suddenly out of nowhere um, a local approaches me and of course he's speaking mandarin and he points to the stain on my pants he points to a similar stain on his pants okay. and he shows me a product okay uh -huh. and he's like he sprays that product on his pants and the stain goes away and he's like he's pointing to it because he's speaking mandarin and he's like okay you should buy this product because you can get rid of this stain and of course we've traveled a lot of places and we know we shouldn't be mm. indulging with locals like this because this felt like a scam but for some reason or the other over those that 3 minute or 4 minute conversation he convinced me to buy that okay and i ended up buying that mm -hmm. and once he was once i paid him the money he left I realized that when I sprayed that thing on my pants it was just nothing water happened. there was nothing in there and then I looked online just looked at the brand of that bottle the bottle right I realized that I had paid 10 times the amount of what the bottle actually cost and okay. that bottle was filled with water so scams like tourist scams while traveling happen everywhere and I thought it's apt that today mm -hmm. on this episode of travel explore celebrate life let's discuss tourist scams because as we are traveling whether it's for a weekend or whether you're flying long haul like you know if we are sitting here in mumbai and long haul can be europe yeah. australia new zealand yes, japan anywhere yeah. whenever you are subject to a scam it can be irritating yes. it's similar to you losing your passport right, right? if you lose your wallet mm -hmm. then your trip is over we often see that passport lost trip over similarly wallet lost trip over and there are different kinds of scams that have come up in a lot of the countries outside of india which i thought it's important that we bring to light you've been to more than 90 countries now i've been to a little more than 42 countries different countries are unique in the scams that they have so let's let's discuss that now this was one example that i gave prevalent in china of a man or a woman approaching you pointing to a stain on your clothes and then trying to sell a product to you have you come across any scam like this in all of your travels what we'll do on this episode is that i'll tell you about one scam mm -hmm. you can tell me and then yeah we'll try to share some tips with our listeners also so listeners let's get going with this episode of travel explore celebrate life tell us yes neil you are absolutely right and i think you know the reason that scams work is because people are so convincing i mean we wouldn't be scammed if people were not convincing in the first place right because we are we are very as travelers we are always careful we know what to do and as obviously the more you travel there are more chances that you would be scammed and and it leaves a bad taste in your yeah. mouth honestly like you want to enjoy your holiday and i think 
all of us want to really have a great time when we travel and if we just take a little precaution we can all be okay we we, we need to know what happens where and um, you know you you mentioned china and the last i think maybe two years back i was in budapest uh, with my friends and the number one reason for scams there and i think this has happened to me not once but twice is taxis Okay. and taxis can really scam you so in in budapest they don't even stop or they overcharge you like crazy and when you talk to the others and even some of the locals they say oh that they they are the new you know the dons of budapest or whatever because they can charge you the extra so a biggest tip here is to not go in the local taxis that you get there Uber does not work in Budapest, and that's why you end up so trying what, to hail option, a taxi. What option? There are different have? other uh, cab hailing, uh, you know, share um, uh, apps. So I think Bolt is one that mm-hmm. really works well there. So look for the local uh, apps which are other than Uber that work. Also, the hotel can get you a taxi. We realize very uh, quickly that if you tell the hotel they call a cab, if you phone and call, you get one. You know, like Budapest, especially in the evening, is so pretty. It's all illuminated, and after you've walked the whole day, you're tired. You just want a cab to go back home. You one, you cannot get, and two, if they get, it's at least three to four times the charge. And my other scam, it was really a scam, was in the U.S. Uh, you know, when we got off at San Francisco Airport and we had to go to San Jose, Santa Clara, near San Jose. So that's quite a distance, right? And when I looked at some of the private transfers that were available, uh, that we could book ourselves, was like to the tune of two thirty dollars or something. And we thought that that is a bit steep. Maybe it'll be cheaper if we go there. So we land and we go to the taxi lines that you see often outside the airports. Similarly, we went to San Francisco Airport. We went there, and he showed us a prize. I, I, I did all the right things. I checked yeah. the prize, right? So I went there and I said, "Okay, how much would it be?" And he showed me like some chart, and that showed around one fifty dollars. And I said, "That sounds fair. It's okay." But by the time I reached the hotel, and when the he pulled out the bill, there were just some extras that were added, and then the tip, and I ended up paying two twenty dollars. Yeah. And then. I realized it was a scam because after I checked in the next day, same hotel, I saw one more person come in. He was from Europe, and he was arguing about the same. He actually ended up calling the cops and trying to settle the whole thing. So taxis for me are are the one place where you really can get scammed everywhere you go. So you have to be careful about that. Just be a little careful. Check out what works. Call the taxis. Use other ride sharing apps, and you'll be fine. Well. Speaking of scams, right? Mm-hmm. You've been to the Eiffel Tower, right. right? At the bottom of the Eiffel Tower, have you noticed like hawkers just sitting down and playing this game? Like you know, there are three cups mm-hmm. and they are moving the three right, cups, right. three cups with a ball. And it's human tendency, right? That mm. uh, you tend to go mm. and like sit sit there. and sit there in a way where you also want to see what is happening mm. and what they promise you is that if you are able to identify which cup the ball is in mm-hmm. you will win i think 10 dollars or 20 mm. dollars mm. now it's quite easy right. right and there's always a crowd around and it and with probability you should get it one yeah, or yeah exactly yeah. so you know how that scam works is that the hawker who's sitting with the three cups mm-hmm. and the people who are watching are all part of one group Okay. Uh-huh. Now, the moment you you see a group of people mm. gathered around something, you also want to go there. Mm. Now, while you're concentrating on the cups moving and the balls moving, you're playing that game. You think you're going to win those ten dollars, but while you're concentrating so hard, there are those three or four people who will crowd around you. So you'll also think, "Oh wow, so many people mm. are watching," mm. and suddenly they'll just pull your wallet out, and it's done. So that's that's mm. a scam. See, end of the day. a scam is for your wallet right 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 and i tend to follow one travel tip is that mm. i always keep my wallet at the front of my mm. pocket in my front pockets and not at, in my back pockets but there are just so many scams that you know keep happening all the time where you're like um how much should i protect the wallet and today you have you want credit cards and all of that so that was one scam but let me ask you this mm-hmm. when you go shopping mm-hmm. right let's say you were in budapest mm. you went shopping now if you bought a shawl or a scarf or something like that how would you pay 
usually use a forex card because for me that is the easiest way to pay mm-hmm. um you know otherwise you end up having cash though in some places especially in budapest you need to have the local currency because not every shop accepts a card so there are the especially the smaller shops they will often not take the card because the amount they pay on the card is much more so they will always ask for cash so it depends but usually i would use forex card let's assume let's assume uh, you're using a card right okay. let me tell you a scam that the mm-hmm. cashier can do with your card okay okay because see i want to ask you these questions and then i want to like kind of role yeah. play let's, that incident so yeah, that yeah. it's easier for our listeners also right you're at the shop mm-hmm. you give the card now the cashier will act as if they are on their phone they are busy right. on their phone mm-hmm. so they take the card mm-hmm. card in one hand phone in the other phone is above the card and they are acting as if they are either talking to someone or they or are acting busy. as yeah. if they are messaging someone mm-hmm. but when you are waiting for them they will quickly click a photo of your card now wow. you know that in india to swipe your card online you require mm-hmm. an otp but if you are doing international transactions you don't require an otp sometimes so clicking a photo of their card you have swiped the card you have bought your scarf or shawl mm. done but hmm. then your photos with them and they'll probably use that to buy anything they want and then suddenly you'll see a credit card charge on your card for 50000 rupees and you would not know that so that's for cards now what do you think could go wrong if you're paying by cash like think about a scam that could go wrong i have one in my mind but use your imagination <laughs> Feel a lot of things go wrong when you're paying by cash. Um, you know they may just they are such smooth operators mm-hmm. that they take. If say you give them fifty euros, very quickly they turn around and they say you didn't pay me fifty, you just paid me twenty. I'm waiting for the for the remaining, and mm-hmm. that is also something that can happen. You know, mm-hmm. so so there are just so many ways that it can happen. Sometimes they don't give you back the exact change, or they say they don't have change. A note may be torn, a fake note is given. There are just lots of things that can go wrong when you're paying by cash have you experienced something else i have not experienced something else but see one of the things that we do at vina world is that all of us tour managers tend to sit in this very room which right. we call the learning center right and we tend to talk about these tourist scams right. so you come to know what is happening in kazakhstan mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. come to know what's happening in south africa right. and suddenly everyone's aware of them mm-hmm. right so speaking of paying by cash this scam is called the slow counting cash scam mm-hmm. right So the cashier will start counting the notes that they owe you back after mm-hmm. you've paid for a particular thing, and what they'll really do is they'll count very slowly. They'll count so slowly that you get frustrated. Mm-hmm. They'll count slowly, and suddenly they'll take a pause and they'll speak to someone else in the shop, mm-hmm. and then you're just like, okay, give me my money, and I want to go, right? And even if you're not in a hurry, they'll count so slowly that eventually you get uncomfortable. You'll, you'll yeah. get irritated, yeah. and sometimes the denominations that they'll use for the currency will be the lower denominations so if mm. they owe you about like 250 euros mm-hmm. for whatever reason right they'll use 10 euro notes or 5 yeah. euro notes and suddenly you have to sit there and count but they'll count so slowly that after a point you're irritated you take the cash you leave and then you realize that two or three notes are fewer than what you are actually supposed to get mm-hmm. so this is known as the slow, slow counting, counting scam, scam. Mm-hmm. and this connects to something called the salami slicing technique okay where what they are trying to do is that they are trying to get 5 euros of every shopper in that shop mm-hmm. so 5 euros to you is a small chunk of money as compared to a bigger loss right but if there are about 100 people who shop there 5 euros from 100 people it's an it's easy 500 mm. euros that they are earning every day mm-hmm. so one they are selling things to you there's a profit there yeah. plus there is a scam that they are operating at uh, the very end which can be quite mm-hmm. difficult so that is something that you know you can do while shopping but mm-hmm. i wanted to go back to the us right you went to san francisco this year you went to san francisco last year mm-hmm. right and my brother raj told you one thing mm-hmm. do not keep even your cap yeah. in the car right right absolutely so why did he say that right so neil i think uh, you know especially in the bay area and san francisco and and a lot of other places actually let's it's not just there but if you're driving and mm-hmm. if you're on a self drive holiday mm-hmm. you're driving your car and we are so used to how it is back home here that you end up leaving your backpack in there you end up leaving other things in there 
there is a very good chance that by the time you come back to your car, like you leave it there, you leave it in parking, you go to the restaurant, you go sightseeing, you do so many other things. But there's a very good chance that by the time you come back, you've lost, someone's broken into your car and you've lost whatever it is that you left there. So he was so particular that he even refused to let me keep a neck pillow in there. Because today, in especially in San Francisco, you see these signs everywhere that says, beware of, uh, you know, don't leave valuables in the car. Uh, there is breaking in happening. So just cars are being broken into. Make sure that you take your belongings with you. And I think it just makes sense to really carry your belongings with you all the time. If there's something very important, you can put it in the trunk of the car, lock it up. And he actually gave me a funny tip, right? So it's it's so prevalent there now that cars are being broken into for small things. Those are sold and they make money. He said, look, either leave the car very dirty or leave it spotless without even one single thing in there. If it's very dirty, people think there's nothing of value in here. I'm not going to get anything and they won't touch the car. But don't leave one or two things very nice because we here we are used to like we, we work in our cars, we do a lot of things. So used to keeping your cars pick and span, neat and nice and with, you know, sometimes you leave your iPad in your car here, you don't bother. But not even a cap and not even a neck pillow, just don't leave anything or leave everything and keep it messy. And that yeah. kind of seems to work there. Yeah, so, I'm seeing a lot of videos on Instagram where they are just breaking into cars. Yeah. They are breaking into cars in such a way that... It's like, it's crazy. And they are so smooth, you don't realize what's happened. Yeah. Now, speaking of cars, like, let's come to taxis. We started mm -hmm. the episode with you telling mm -hmm. us something about taxis yeah. in Budapest, right? Now, when you get into a taxi, right, where do your bags go? Usually, if you have a small handbag, if it's a big suitcase, you'll put it in the trunk. If not, you would keep it by your side or you keep it on your lap. Uh, especially the small bag that you're carrying, but the big suitcases would go into the trunk, right? So something that is happening uh, more so again in the US and also in some parts of Europe. And see, this is just me bringing to light because some of our tour managers told us about mm -hmm. this, right? Is that you sit in the cab, you put your bags in the trunk mm -hmm. and you then go and sit in the cab, right? Then suddenly at a traffic light while the taxi is waiting somewhere, five people will break open the trunk mm. and run away with your bags. Now to you, the taxi driver is not involved anywhere. Right. But again, the scam involves the same thing. Mm. The taxi driver and these three people are All part hand of in hand. And that's how they break into that trunk easily and your bags are gone. What are some other scams you've come across? Neil, I think one of the most important ones, I'll go back to what you mentioned about the currency notes. And I think... Uh, Let's go back to how do we have the currency notes. Either you go to an ATM and you withdraw or you would exchange money in India and you would carry, with, okay. carry it with you, right? So the first one, when you're at an ATM, the same thing, if there are people lurking around, they're actually watching you and they, they see the pin number that you're entering when you're using your card. They take a photo or there are actually cameras just put up at the ATM booths mm -hmm. and they have all your details and before you know it, people are going to use your card and make away with your money as well. So that, that's something that seems to be happening uh, in a lot of places. So just be really careful when you're at an ATM or withdrawing money. Um, secondly, you know, the same thing, I was speaking to some of the Vina World Tour Managers too, and they told me an incident that happened uh, in Paris. And um, so, so really the cause is a question mark, but the currency that this person was carrying, it's about a hundred dollars or something, or a hundred euros that he wanted to change. Uh, and when he went to the kiosk to change at the foreign exchange kiosk, uh, the lady took the note and said, this note is fake. This is mm. not a uh, original note. And she kept the hundred dollars and he said, but give it back to me if it's fake, yeah. because I will take it. And she said, look, I'll call the cops because it is a crime to carry a fake note. Oh my so God. if you say anything more, I'm going to call the cops right now and you can be arrested. And he had no choice but to leave the dollars, the notes with her and come back. So now, was it really fake? Was it not fake? We have no idea of knowing. So it just makes sense that when you're buying foreign currency itself, be really careful and buy it from a reliable source, from proper foreign exchange, uh, you know, uh, resellers or sellers. Because if you're just buying it off the market, there's a good chance that not every note is, is uh, original. It could be fake currency. And secondly, look what happened to him. He just lost $100 just like that, just when he went to exchange it. So, 
I think that is that is just something crazy. So if, if so many scams are happening, there are still ten, fifteen mm-hmm. that we can mm-hmm. discuss, right? Let's come to travel tips. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll I'll start with a passport. Right. How, according to you, should you protect your passport? Right. So I think one thing when we talk about the passport is to keep it in a really safe and secure place and. again you know you learn a lot from experience so i would say starting from home where do you keep your passport at home i keep it in the locker right but always make sure that you know the locker number that you have the spare key to the locker and that the battery of your locker is not going to run out because it has happened that once i kept my passport in the small you know those godrej lockers you can actually run away with the locker if you want to <laughs> but uh, it was in the locker and for some whatever reason I ran out of battery on the locker, and I said, "Now I have to break this to get the passport out." So, yeah, just be careful when you keep it in the locker. Keep it in the locker, but make sure everything's working. So that is my even first if you're at a hotel, keep it in the locker. I would keep it in the locker when mm. when you're at a hotel. You don't yeah. want to be carrying it around. Um, yeah, so that is the first thing. Second, always make sure that it's away from water mm-hmm. because a damaged passport means it's invalid, right? I would say so, keep your passport away from water and also fire. poha. <laughs> like if you're having poha, <laughs> suddenly a one one strand of Anything. poha that goes on your uh, passport that's and a damaged. And children thing. because yeah. they may scribble on it. Yeah. We actually had this case where someone was set to travel and the. small grandchild came home and was very excited <laughs> that the grandparents are traveling took a marker and like let loose the creativity <laughs> all over the passport and he couldn't travel like it affected the travel completely so just make sure that you really guard your passport even it's it's even like i think it's more valuable than gold diamond whatever you want to say i left my passport at home once and i was about to leave for the airport in like 3 4 hours i go out i come back and i didn't realize but i had kept it in the window and the ac started dripping and there was water there luckily it had not yet touched my passport or i would not be able to travel that yeah, day because then you have to visit the passport office get a exactly. passport in tatkal then that trip anyways is not yeah. fun i i heard a story last night mm-hmm. right speaking of a passport right this is not a scam mm. right but this is a very unique way to be stranded in a country without a passport i got a call nine people holidaying in sri lanka aha uh-huh. okay that's interesting uh-huh. and they are coming back uh-huh. eight of them coming back last night one person scheduled to come back today okay okay and the eight of them come back this okay. person is chilling colombo wants to go to ministry of crab enjoy right. the crabs and all of that wants to come today and um i was like okay like you know yeah. normal case that's come cool. back tomorrow yeah. but what happened was the eight people came back yesterday they came back with the passport of the ninth person oh my god that that is so and i have not heard of this right one yeah, is to lose your passport this is, passport. This is not this. a lost passport right now the person is asking me what to do in this case right. but what can you do it's a lost passport right. because right. no one can travel with his or Someone her passport else's. from yeah. india to sri lanka again because that is also a crime right so often people don't know of this that but carrying someone else's passport with you while crossing borders is illegal is a crime so um that was a very unique thing now that was passport okay. right now one scam that i've come across and i've seen that happen a lot um outside nowadays is a unique but simple scam like you know you'll be walking in a tourist place right and in that tourist place you will suddenly see a wallet on the ground mm-hmm. now what is your instant reflex reaction when you see a wallet just lying on the ground you tend to pick it up and look for people who it would belong to maybe but right or that, you would not even thing. pick you up are, yeah uh-huh. you, but what is your other instant reaction i mean you look at it and wonder who's dropped it i mean i i would just look and that's wonder that's fine but yeah. would you not check your own wallet yeah you would you would right, right. so right. if you're wearing yeah, pants yeah because you're seeing that and you want to see if you have yours because and someone else check, has to check your that. wallet and then you will touch that part where, of your where, pants yeah, wherever you've kept it, it right it is in right Now their wallet has been thrown down for a reason because people want to know where your wallet is. Wow! Oh. And now, if you are in a super popular place, mm. there'll suddenly be ten people crowding around you, and you'll be like, "Okay, tourists are there." Like you know, a lot of uh, a lot of the people are just like coming in and crowding around you, and suddenly because they know where your wallet is, they come It's in, easier. steal it, mm. and gone. Right. Right. I so, have to keep that in mind. I'm going to Barcelona. 
like uh, the end of the month uh, and i really want to, i think i should be very careful with this aspect especially in crowded places yes yeah, especially in crowded places yeah. but sometimes it can happen in anywhere, a normal place anywhere. also yeah. because here we think that you know we are trying mm. to do some good by helping yeah. someone but it may not always mm. be the case for couples right like mm. i have a tip for couples also this this scam is known as the rose scam Right. Okay. Yeah. You know yeah. what the rose scam yes, is? Yes, we've seen a lot of that in Europe. Oh yeah. yeah. Then, then you tell us about it. Right. So what happens is, and especially in a, re- it it's even happened in a restaurant. It, okay. It happens on the road, but it can even happen in a restaurant where a couple is going around, and then there'll be someone who comes and gives the lady a rose, and then he will ask, and and she, you know, the instinct is when someone gives you a rose is to take it, right? Yeah. And then he'll ask an exorbitant amount of money to the guy, and he doesn't want to look bad, so yeah. you end up paying that money. And I've actually seen this happen in restaurants in Europe when you're sitting on your table, and they just come across on the table and they start offering you, and even if you say no, well, then it's not very pleasant but it does happen so and then you careful. just have to pay for it you have right? to pay for it you can't yeah. really you can't yeah. really do anything, anything about it something let's move southeast asia mm-hmm. what are some of the interesting things that people should be mindful of when they're traveling around southeast asia i think um, you know neil one of the things i heard was and that is in one of your favorite countries japan um is like a, a drinks kind of a scam where they say that the first beer is free and then you pay for the second beer but the second beer may be 50 dollars or 100 yeah, dollars like, you know, and <laughs> it may be costing and it's But, all in yeah, fine print right yeah. and you don't bother to read all that you just see first beer free you walk in and they do that the second one i've heard is the all you can drink kind of a package all you can drink all okay. you can drink package and this also apparently happens in uh, japan and korea and the other places okay. so you go in there and you're sitting there and you're you know you go and you pay a certain amount of money and it says all you can drink and they don't tell you and then maybe it's half an hour one hour and you're still drinking and then they tell you that the all you can drink was only for the first 30 minutes every drink saying? that you take after that is costing you like maybe 400 dollars or something so you end up paying four times more than what you would do if you had just walked in and ordered your two or three drinks so that is something i'd heard of is like is i think it's it's really crafty to do something like that we don't bother to read the fine print so you should really make sure what you're getting into when there's something so i feel any offer that sounds too good to be true is too good to be true anywhere in the world anywhere in the world anywhere yeah, in the I world i think that's a good way to put it One scam that I've come across more so Southeast Asia because there are many by lanes and all of that. Uh-huh. I call it the photographer scam. Okay. Now let's assume you and Sara are traveling. Uh huh. You want to click a photo of the both of you. Right. What are you going to do? Not everyone wants to click selfies all the time. Yeah. So you're going to stop someone uh-huh. and request them yeah. to take a photo. Yeah. So there are people roaming around these popular sites uh-huh. who know that you know these two people will want to take a photo. So they'll be looking around you mm. and suddenly you go like hey hi excuse me can you mm. please click a photo now what happens then one scam is that they click a photo and now they'll be like okay give me 10 euros mm. right yeah. but i think that's still a cheaper scam right as compared to the next one when they have your phone <laughs> they just run away with it <laughs> your phone's gone true so, you can, yeah so i think you should carry those you know the way what back can you do? use those what flip phones do? those silly phone but you want your good photos right what no. what you going to do i, I mean i'm just imagining if i give them my camera what will happen if they run away yeah, like exactly like and you yeah. so in london mm. right in london they are saying that if you like wearing watches mm-hmm. don't wear them in london see most of the time people buy new shoes new clothes new watches so that they can enjoy mm. them while they are traveling right but one advisory that the police in london have actually given out is that if you own a mid expensive or a super expensive watch just don't wear it wear it at wow. home only <laughs> so um what is happening is the watch uh, cartel is is how it's called and if in london you know if you look at places mm. like mayfair yeah. or park lane and all of that they are just super popular and mm. a lot of the high net worth individuals roam around there so these gangs roam around at night and at knife point they are mm. like trying to steal your watches but this is not a scam this is theft straight up mm, yeah. but one more thing is that you know sometimes you're walking around and you're walking around with your phone in your hand just mm. like in mm. in your mm. hand right there are people on cycles or bikes like bicycles mm. 
who are just roaming around and they know that you're walking around and when mm-hmm. you're typing or messaging someone you're not holding your phone super tight yeah, right? yeah, yeah. you're just like holding it lightly yeah. they just snatch your phone and bike away <laughs> and if you go on to instagram mm-hmm. and if you search mm-hmm. i don't know why i search for these hashtags sometimes sometimes <laughs> it's for our tour manager trainings <laughs> but i was searching for london uh london tourist scams just to understand what is currently operating and you'll see a lot of videos like this mm-hmm. and if someone's on a cycle how are you going to yeah. really uh, go find them or anything yeah. like that right so it it kind of gets very mm. very difficult so i think all in all i would say that keep your wallet in the front yeah. in your front pocket passport mm-hmm. in your front pocket and if you see a lot of people lurking around you you know something's right. fishy but it's not always uh easy to find that out of course last 20 25 minutes we've been talking about this let me also bring in one more thing mm-hmm. like not related to cash not related to your wallet not related to anything see nowadays like eiffel tower sometimes the queues can be what one two hours one long? or two hours easy easy right easy. and you know there are people who are selling tickets outside also right. who are telling you that right. oh my god look at this yeah, queue yeah. two hours you really want to wait mm. let me sell you a ticket i'll mm. sell you at 1 euro more than Mm. how much it's costing so you're mm. like might as yeah, well buy it from this person mm. you'll buy the tickets and then when you go to the line you realize that these are invalid tickets so no i think when it comes to tickets of any kind be it for the sightseeing attractions be it for theater be it, there are so many you know it's not even a person selling you mm. it could be an online site yeah. so you may go online and find a super deal giving you like 10 dollars off 20 dollars off amazing you want to buy that ticket and or like skip the lines and stuff like that and then when you end up there and you realize the ticket is not valid at all because yeah. the website itself is uh, yeah. is not like a, a true website so i think it makes sense to first start buying at the right place if you really want to cut the lines buy or skip the lines but buy it from an authentic source uh, make sure you have your tickets uh, um, you know in your hand and nowadays there are so many online vouchers as well so there's no point of losing tickets anymore not not so much but yeah be careful of all these people trying to peddle you their tickets or other stuff i see that a lot in london at leicester square uh, where where the theater district is so i remember i, I love theater and every time initially i was to go used to go there and you know just like our olden times where people used to try and sell movie tickets in black they come and sell you these theater tickets and then they say uh, exactly what and you said it can said. be expensive right it can yeah. be very expensive it can be a good think it starts around 80 90 pounds and then it can be 200 250 pounds and then you know you've been scammed when the tickets are not valid so just go to the proper theater website and buy it there i you, you should not be doing anything else yeah i think um something that covid made us realize is that safety is quite important right but along with safety like safety security also mm-hmm. becomes quite mm-hmm. important because um we are we are seeing it here in india also so there are so many upi scams right google mm. pay scams paytm phone yeah. pay scams something similar is happening while you're traveling also so i'll often change my narrative to not only saying that the passport is the most important thing you ensuring that your travel also is scam free right in all of these sightseeing places also becomes quite important oh. to end this episode three tips okay um three Let's Three start tips, yeah whatever you yeah. comes to your mind let's start with the one that you said about taking your photos neil you know you said mm-hmm. what do you do if you want you want your photos together and you want that so one tip there is that of course carry a selfie stick and whatever but maybe you don't want a selfie then look around and i would say reach out to maybe someone who has a young child because they would I tend to be they would that. tend to be let me complete one they can't run away if the child is there right they will they will want to they picking up the child and your phone and running away is a little too difficult for okay, anyone yeah. so so it's a little safer in that sense you know so of course you're still taking a risk but i would say if you really want that photo then take a small risk and do that um secondly be aware of the rules you know and regulations so say again i go back to budapest and we we then decided let's use local transport because yeah. we don't want to take the taxis and the local transport is really good um so we bought our tickets we went to the station and if you're traveling elsewhere with a local ticket watch out whether the ticket needs to be validated mm. 
Now we knew that it had to be validated, but we really could not see the machines where you validate the tickets. Mm. Like it just wasn't there. And we got into the train, and then there was someone standing there, and the ticket collectors then come in and they give you a hefty fine. And my friend was from the US, and she really gave him a mouthful, and she said, "You guys are scamming." And I told her, "It's not that." But we checked, and apparently, actually. The ticket collectors do make tourists a uh, scapegoat for those things. I guess they also have targets, right? I think so. They also have targets, and they fulfill that. So yeah. again, keep looking for any ticket validating machines. Make sure your tickets validated before you start your travel. So mm. that's something that you have to do. Um, the third thing I would say is whenever you leave the hotel room, um, one of the things that has been happening in Europe, and I have actually lost a watch. when i was in europe i just went down for breakfast it skipped my mind to put my watch inside the safe or carry it with me or just wear it like i went for breakfast by the time i came up the watch was gone oh, what seriously from the from the room so i guess don't keep your valuables don't leave valuables out in the room mm-hmm. you never know and it's not about you know where you are or what kind of a hotel you are it could be anywhere that these things happen very often very when you're in hotels or say you're a group or a family traveling or friends traveling you tend to have adjoining rooms you tend to have rooms which are close to each other right and you say oh i'll just go and pick up this thing and come or i'll just go and get water and come and you tend to leave the room door open hmm. so try and avoid that because that way you're just leaving it open for everyone else to come in and you never know who's who's looking around so i would say those are a few things that you really should be careful about I think on our like you know other podcast five minute travel tips we often say that pack light. Mm-hmm. So here I would say when it comes to your jewelry or watches also pack light. Right. Just try to keep one thing. You, you know, know, I actually have a friend, and what she does is for every piece of real jewelry she makes another piece which is fake. And so if she has like a destination wedding to go to, she she's carrying the, the exact. It looks the same, huh. but she's carrying the fake jewelry and traveling, and then you know she has her. joy of wearing a jewelry too but it's yeah. fake so even if she loses it she doesn't mind so much as much as she would to lose real jewelry so that's something that has been trending or happening too i guess i think that's it a good sense. way yeah. that's a good way to probably end it like you know i'd yeah. like to tell our listeners or viewers on youtube that this episode wasn't to scare any of you right yeah. i think the world is an amazing place we think india or the world is somewhere you will celebrate life but it's always good to know of all of the scams that really take place because if you don't know then you could be party to it you could be subject to something yeah. like that and you don't want that happening yeah. right so yeah. i think let's let's end it on this note yeah. so guys these were some of the scams that we know of do you know of any of them if you're watching it on youtube let us know in the comments or write to us at neel n e i l at the rate vinaworld.com or sunila s u n i l a at the rate vinaworld.com These were some of the tourist scams that you might encounter and now that you know about them just try to avoid them and enjoy the place that you are in. That's it on today's episode of Travel Explore Celebrate Life. If you like this podcast, of course subscribe to it, rate us and also tell your friends about it because we want the world to be a very amazing place where all of us celebrate life. So until next week, you keep celebrating life and we will see you with another fun topic next time. Bye.